This is NBC News for Universal Kids. I'm Savannah Sellers, and here's your Week in Review. Monarch butterflies. Every fall, these beautiful orange, yellow, and black insects travel 3,000 miles from the northeastern United States and Canada to sunny Mexico. On their journey, female monarch butterflies lay eggs along the way. They can lay 150 to 250 eggs at once, so they need to find a safe space for the little caterpillars to hatch. And that's where people like Ellen come in. Ellen has been taking care of the monarchs on New York's Fire Island habitat for 10 years. She makes sure there is enough milkweed for the butterflies to eat and lay their eggs on. She also keeps track of how many there are. She gently wrangles the monarchs. To wrangle is to go like this. And gives each butterfly a number and a name. They can fly up to 100 miles a day and they weigh less than a penny in a paper clip. Some monarch butterfly populations have gone down in the last 20 years. So Ellen's work is helping more monarch butterflies survive. And she's devoted to teaching kids in the area how to take care of these beautiful butterflies. Ellen saw more caterpillars last year than ever, so it's a good sign that the sky over Long Island may soon be filled with monarch butterflies. Kids changing laws. Nine-year-old Dane Best from Severance, Colorado, was on a class trip to Town Hall to learn about government when he heard that snowball fights there were against the law. And when it comes to snowballs, he was like a lot of kids. I broke the law a lot. The law was written almost 100 years ago and basically said that people can't throw things at each other. But what's winter without a snowball fight? So Dane took action to change the law. I asked my mom if she could do it and then she told me I, I had to do it. He and his friends wrote letters to their town council. Then Dane spoke to a big group of grown-ups about why snowball fights should be allowed. Today's kids need reasons to play outside. Kids want to have snowball fights without breaking the law. After Dane's speech, the council voted, and now it is totally okay to have snowball fights in Severance, Colorado. Dane even got to throw the first legal snowball. Throw your first snowball, the first legal one. Yeah. And now, have you seen this? Benny, the ice skating dog. His owner is a former professional ice skater and taught him to skate with custom dog skates on his front paws. And it was really easy to like teach him one thing and then an hour later add on to that thing and add on. Benny can also swim and ride a skateboard. Wow, he is one sporty dog. The anniversary of the internet. That's right, the internet turns 30 years old this month. It all started in 1989 at a physics lab in Switzerland, where English scientist Tim Berners-Lee got an idea. His job would be a lot easier if computers could talk to each other. Computers needed a way to connect, like a phone line. That's when Tim came up with online, a network where computers around the whole wide world could talk to each other. And the World Wide Web was born. Scientists thought it would catch on quickly. Every business, no matter how large, and no matter how small, will be on the internet in the year 2000. But it took a long time. People didn't understand what the internet was. Just what is this main artery of the information superhighway? As technology improved, more people bought computers, so more people had access to the internet. And soon, everyone wanted to be online. Fast forward to now, and the internet is still the place to be. You can shop, get medical advice, create music, make videos. You can even go to school on the internet. Can you imagine the world without the internet? It might be hard to, and that's because the internet changed the way we live. A home for chimpanzees. That's Star, that's this star. is Penny. Welcome to Chimp Haven. It's like a retirement home for chimpanzees, where they go to grow old and monkey around. It's usually a lot of playing, sometimes a little fighting, um, a lot of sleeping and resting. Before all 259 chimps came to this sanctuary in Louisiana, scientists used them to look for ways to treat diseases in humans. Why chimps? because they have a lot of the same genetic makeup as humans. We're talking 96, 97% like us. Chimps are extremely intelligent. At the sanctuary, they need special activities to challenge them. And some of them are even involved in their own health care. Put it all the way, come on, all the way. 
The sanctuary is planning to expand so more chimps can live at Chimp Haven. But I'm wondering, do they like living there? In the afternoons, they're usually nesting and they're, you know, pretty silent. And you walk in the wing and you just hear laughter. That, to me, lets me know that there are signs of happiness. <laughs> Looks like these chimps will be enjoying the rest of their days in good spirits and great company. And now, have you seen this? This is Nickers. He may look like a cow, but he is actually a steer, and his enormous size is making him an internet superstar. Nickers isn't your average seven-year-old steer. Weighing in at one and a half tons, he's as heavy as a car. Plastic made of crabs? Plastic is just about everywhere. It's in straws, grocery bags, it's even in clothes. Over the past 70 years, 9 billion tons of plastic have been made. So where does all that plastic go? Well, nowhere. Plastic doesn't break down easily. So those plastic things blow in the wind, clog our landfills, and float into the ocean where they can harm fish. At the Georgia Institute of Technology, Carson Meredith is in a race with other scientists across the globe. There's absolutely a race. The finish line? Inventing an earth-friendly material that can be used instead of plastic. Meredith has a fishy fix to our plastic problem. These are crab shells. The secret ingredient for his plastic replacement is crab. Oh, it's strong. The crab shells make this clear film biodegradable. It will break down naturally, unlike plastic. About 10 million tons of crab, shrimp, or lobster shells go to waste every year. So this alternative would be using waste to reduce waste. This plastic substitute can't be made fast enough to replace plastic just yet, but it's a place to start as scientists keep on creating. And now, have you seen this? Scientists aren't the only ones helping to rid the world of plastic. In London, England, this man pedals a bamboo water bike to clean up canals and rivers. Thank you very much. He picks plastic out of the water, and in just one hour, his bags are filled with plastic waste. That's your look at this week's NBC News for Universal Kids. Now, go join the conversation.